welcome to the 52nd episode of the Havalo Havalo Travel Podcast. I am your co-host, Kevin Allen. With me, as always... Catherine Talkbox, we're with Hawaii Magazine. Thanks for tuning in. We have a special guest. Um, too bad you can't see her. Oh, you can if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Yep. Because, you know, she's a vision. Lena Paula. Hi, Lena. Is with publishing, but she's also old. Hi, Lena. I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. Like, physically. Like, physically. I know, in person. Yeah. Oh, well, on a trail, maybe. Oh, well, that's right. That I saw wild. you. What um, was Moana. that? Was that? Oh. Yeah, Moana Middle. I had my kid with me. Yeah. And you guys yeah. went and found the waterfall, which you always do. Is that how you guys know each other? Through hiking? No. Oh. oh. We know well, each other from... Like Twitter, date, like when Twitter first came out. Oh wow! I'm pretty sure, you know, with Melissa, them. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, we've oh. been through we've been through several relationships together. <laughs> now she's married to this awesome guy. Is. I never thought you were going to get married again. I was like very like no, and then you met Brent, and he's like, yeah, you, you're yeah. It's a it's a good pair. Yeah, I I'm a big fan. Anyway. Anyways. Sorry. We're just, <laughs> it's okay. We're catching up. I like, to, I like to be the outsider looking in, you know, see what's oh, going sure on. Oh, you are, Kevin. Oh, my God. I can't believe you haven't pivoted and talked about something super random like you always not, do. Not yet. Oh, man. I don't really have a lot on the mind. I don't I don't have a lot on the top to talk about. Really? Um, randomly. I do have a lot to talk about with Lena about the Coconut Coalition. Oh, yeah. Nice pivot. Thank anyway, you. Lena is part of Coconut Coalition, which is a nonprofit that's, you know, um, looking, I mean, their sole purpose is to preserve, restore um, the coconut, the coconut, oh my God, the cocoa crater uh, trail. So a lot of our, our listeners may not have heard of it or been on it. We do have a lot of people um, who are, you know, from the mainland or in Canada a lot of Canadians for some reason, um, and maybe they have. Anyway, it's a it's a trail system. It's a, it's a tracks trail like train tracks or whatever rail tracks that go up the side of Coco Crater, which is in East Honolulu on Oahu. It's a really really popular hike. It gets about a, several hundred hikers a day. Uh, maybe not. Maybe post pandemic, I would say. Maybe maybe still. I don't know. And what Lena and a group of volunteers are doing. They partner with the city recently and have been, um, you know, doing it on their own, restoring this um, this trail that a lot of people really love, including Lena. So Lena's here to talk about um, about the trail, about Coconut Coalition, what they're doing, and how people can help support their their efforts. So anyway, Lena, wait, I had to I have to ask you though, when was the first time you've done that trail? Um, probably. 12 years ago I don't remember doing it like in high school or anything so 12 years ago um maybe 13 when I moved back to Hawaii and the first time I did it I didn't even make it to the top really like tired dry heating on the side I was like I can't do this how many steps is it is it not a thousand something what is yeah so unofficially it's a thousand forty eight um rail ties yeah that's right i i think kevin have you ever done it kevin i did it uh the first time i did it um was a couple years ago yeah for a story it was like it was supposed to be like a our my first thoughts on my first time up coco head crater um and i didn't take water or anything i i came very unprepared i went during sunrise and i like didn't bring any water and i made it up to the top I crawled a little bit. I crawled only maybe like 20 steps, but I did crawl. It was really embarrassing. I'm glad no one was there to see it. Um, but I made it to the top and I'm like, wow, I am really dehydrated. Um, so, yeah. And we then I post that story in the show notes. Cause that's a funny story. That's I a think. fun story. Yeah. That, that's a good one. But, um, fortunately going down is a lot easier than coming up. Um, so I was able to make it out of there. And, uh, yeah, I'm the opposite. I don't like going down the rail tracks. Really? At all. I hate it. Yeah. You can like run so down I it started, a little bit. No, I started doing it when maybe like in, I think I, for sure I was doing it in like early 2000s. So what would that be? Oh my God. Is that 20 years ago? Yeah, no. probably. How can that be? I'm only 26. Um, damn it. 
anyway, it was early 2000s. And, you know, back then it was, I mean, you could do the, you could do it with no one. Like, no, you would never see anyone. Middle of the day, in the morning, there'd be nobody. It's very there, popular now. Yeah, there used to be, and I mean, Lena can talk about this too. There's unofficial, like, records, like how fast people go up and down it. And I remember back then, there used to be like a tree that grew out of the rail ties. Anyway, uh, I met this guy who was featured in, like, Sports Illustrated. He lives in Hawaii Kai. He's an old guy at the dog park. I met him. And he had the unofficial record, and I forget what it was. It was like sub eight minutes or something like that. Oh, yeah, wow. and I remember being on the top of the stairs, and this guy came running up. I know we're going off on a tangent, but this is a good story. This kind of lean, tall, holly guy, kind of you know, older, maybe in his forties. He was older then. I mean, <laughs> ten people, but, and he, he ran up the stairs, and and I was at the top, and I was watching him, and I I was like, damn, you did that fast, and he did it in under nine minutes. He did it every day after work. He was a Roberts Hawaii tour bus driver or tour van driver. He did it every day after work for his exercise. Then he said, I make it down in four and a half minutes. And I said, that's impossible. And he said, time me. So I was with a group of, I was with like a couple of people and we timed him. He made it down in four and a half minutes. My goodness. I, I'm not rolling down. I mean, he ran down in four and a half minutes. <laughs> But anyway, those are the things about this, this, I feel like this trail, I mean, I hate to call it a trail. It's not really a trail, but it's hike or whatever. It's got so many stories and people have so many Mm -hmm. um, connections to it. And there's like a lot of this history. And so tell us about like how you got involved and what makes this, you know, these, these uh, tracks so special. Um, Yeah. So when I finally started doing it regularly after the incident, I didn't. (laughs) <laughs> but I didn't even pick it up. Um, I just started, you know, I mean, it took a few years. I've probably only been doing it regularly for the past um, three or four years. Um, and then at that point, I was doing it um, five days a week, sometimes seven. Um, and then I met um, other regular hikers. And that's how they started talking about the t- deterioration of the stairs and that they wanted to form um, a group because we were all regulars. And so they actually started the nonprofit. And this was Jane and Drew, who are not with the coalition anymore, um, but they completely support it. But um, yeah, so we formed the, non- the nonprofit and we just started um, going from there. I mean, it's a very long process. This has been over. Um, over two years that we've been working with the city um, and just, you know, trying to actually form something and get it going. And now this past December, we started actually working on the trail. So it's been a long, a long ways making. How does it work? So, I, you know, we in media have always, we're very cognizant of, of talking about trails or hikes that are sanctioned by the state, either state run or state managed. We don't like to write about trails that I know Lena does all the time that are illegal or on private property. But in this case, it's interesting because it's not really a sanctioned hike, right? But it is city, it's city owned. And how come they don't maintain it? Why is it up to the community to, to maintain it? Um, well, yeah, it's not a sanctioned trail. Um, it's not run by the state. It's just the city owns it. And they, I think they kind of just almost gave up. Like people are going to do it anyways. You know, um, mm-hmm. they know that people do it, obviously. Um, and they weren't um, for it and they weren't really against it. Because I think at one point um, years ago, they did try to shut down and that didn't go very well. So they just kept it open and, um, you know, and people were going to do it anyways. What is it about the trail that people love? Like, if you had to describe this trail to those of those of people who've never done it or have never seen it, how would you take us through it? So, I would say it's our Hawaiian stairmaster, our outdoor Hawaiian stairmaster, and I would say do not underestimate the stairs. <laughs> you know, because people think like Kevin, oh, don't bring water, even though it's <laughs> early in the morning. Yeah. I'm not going to bring water, but you're going to sweat your butt off either way and um you know it's just you know very slow in the beginning you know a little more even in the beginning and you just kind of take your time and I feel like right when you get to the bridge which which is kind of the halfway point um then it it starts getting a lot steeper and that's when you're really working um, 
you know, working your legs, your cardio, your breathing. And um, then you make it to the top and you're like, wow, I climbed this and the views are amazing. I can see Diamond Head. I can see Coco Head at Hanama Bay. I can see the Kaibi coastline. And it's just, you know, people go up there for sunset, um, sunrise, sunset. You can see whales, you know, during whale season. It's, it's beautiful. You know, and you get, after you get to the stairs, you can go, you know, 30 seconds more and get to the top, the metal grating. And it's just a 360 view. And it's, you know, everybody, visitors and locals, they love it because it's a challenge. I mean, there's so many people in Hawaii, even East Honolulu residents, they, they haven't done it. And when they actually do, they're just like, wow, this is in my backyard. Or they cross it off their bucket list. And this is just something that they had to do. And it is challenging. Even for me as a regular, I, I'm still worn. I'm still tired. I still, you know, sweat like crazy. But it's a good, it's a good workout. Yeah, they love it. People love it. Yeah, it's, it's such a great view when you get to the top. And I, I do really enjoy that, like, uh, that sense of community, I guess. Like how there, a community has formed around, like, you know, this trail, this really hard People love the people love the pain, I guess. I don't know, but um, yes. it, it brings them together or something. But it has yeah. been a little, um, you know. I think that term that get, that gets thrown around a lot is love to death, um, because you know mm-hmm. it has seen like a lot of a lot more hikers recently, and you know due to the maintenance. Um, but like, what are some of I guess what are some of the dangerous like dangers of it being too worn down? I mean, is it the steps eroding away too much? Is it the trail becoming unstable? Like what, what are some of the the concerns, I guess? Um, I think, well, for us, the main concern is, um, you know, getting the steps to be back to being somewhat even Mm. and the erosion control. The erosion control is the, is the biggest part because we, you know, you really have to pay attention to how, you know, especially after a heavy rainfall, um, what the water is creating and how it's, you know, forming um, and eating away at the, the sides, basically. Um, and so, I mean, I would say the most dangerous part, though, is people just being unprepared. You know, like I said, they think it's just steps. So they don't have water. And yeah. They're too exhausted. And even if they're young and fit, you'll be surprised at how many people I've seen that are, you know, yakking on the side or just have to sit out and take a break because it's no joke. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I think that's the biggest part that, um, you know, just being unprepared. Mm-hmm. But now when you get to the top, it is a lot more uneven. So you have to be careful. And when it's raining, obviously, you know, you should know your limits and, you know, the ties, the wood ties can get slippery. Yeah. So even I take little detours, like going around the bridge when, um, when it's wet, because I don't want to slip and fall or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, when we've all had our fair share of, um, balls, oh. <laughs> but that being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, <Yeah. that> bridge. <laughs> yeah. One time I did that bridge and there was a beehive. This was a long time ago. I oh. don't know. Mm-hmm. Were you there for that? And I mean, it was like, why, why, why are we doing yeah. this? The beehive, and you're trying to. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. been several times. Yeah, the bees have come back. Um, oh, really? A couple of years back, we yes. you know, got the beekeeper to come out to collect the bees. Oh, really? Um, oh, wow. But actually, I just heard again yesterday that there are some bees on the bridge again. They just love that bridge. They love that see bridge. It up, find another opening. That's where the bees are going. <laughs> I should make my, um, honey from the bees there and then sell it as part of your like uh, fundraising efforts. <laughs> that, Why that, not? That's a good right? segue, Kat, into my <laughs> next into my next point. Yeah. Um, you work on that, and I will work on the trail. <laughs> you can get that started. Oh, okay. You're in charge of the honey, Kat. But yeah. you guys are you guys are primarily um, volunteer run. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so all of us are. Um, it's a you know volunteer based. Uh, and we just there's like usually the board members are the core volunteers and we do the installing um, and tons of people want to volunteer all the time so you know they either show up or they sign up with the volunteer system and they can do gravel or um, you know filling gravel and we do the installing oh I see I see and um, 
sorry. So for the volunteer days, what exactly, um, like, what is it? If you if you decide to sign up and volunteer, what can what can a volunteer expect to do? Like, get there. Is there an orientation? Is there like a? Yeah. So Saturday we made it our official volunteer day. So you sign up online. Um, there is an orientation. You know, you do sign a waiver online um, because it is not you know, bring water. Um, wear your sunscreen, mm -hmm. be prepared to get dirty. Um, and the gravel bags, they're not light, you know, or if you're carrying a rail tie up to a designated spot, you know, that's not light either. So they're, they're waterlogged. So <laughs> you get a really good uh, workout. So we asked everybody to be, you know, 18 and over, they're going to volunteer. Now we have unofficial, unofficial volunteer days. Um, if one of the members are there and we can open up the container, we take out the gravel buckets and um, people can just take gravel up to the to the designated spots as well and pour gravel. Um, but Saturdays normally are big days. I see. So, mm -hmm. I enjoy that everything is a workout at Coco Crater. Yeah, everything. No matter what, you're getting, you're sweating. Yeah. So you, if you don't live here or you're not, you're like Kevin, you can't physically do labor like that. Um, um, you can also donate. I mean, you guys have a GoFundMe page, right? And you also have um, partnered, not partnered with, but you're part of the Amazon Smile program now. And that's, that's yeah. new. So tell, tell us how people can get involved, even if they can't lug buckets of gravel. Yeah. So if you can't physically help us, um, we were, we're a nonprofit, so we're always needing funds. You know, every, every bit, um, every donation, we're very happy and very grateful for anything that we can get. So they can go to our GoFundMe and it's Coconut Coalition. Um, and we, yes, we set up our Amazon Smile. So you can change charities anytime you want, you know, take turns with whatever your other favorite charities are. But if you list um, Coconut Coalition for your charity, then that point, is it 0.05% gets uh, donated to us. So all of your purchases, I mean, almost everything is eligible for Amazon uh, Smile. Mm, and then, or you can just, you know, send a check directly as well. I mean, we are, like I said, we're always needing funds. Every bit goes to supplies that we had run out of and that we still need to purchase. I think that brings up an interesting point, um, just kind of like what kind of challenges you guys face, you know, like what are what are some of your major roadblocks when it comes to kind of, you know, re restoring Cocoa Head or Cocoa Creek? Yeah, so we are, there's no shortage of volunteers. It's the funding, mm. you know, because we only got 74,000 in supplies and from the city, <clears throat> which they, you know, they purchased for us. Um, and really the it's basically all gone you know that's all gone we have maybe three more truckloads of gravel that are coming two or three truckloads of gravel that are coming um all of our rail ties are already at the site um they will be gone in no time we had to order more clips which came out of you know our um our funding mm -hmm. we have to you know all the tools i mean just everything so it's really um, the supplies, you know, we need money. We need to purchase more supplies. Otherwise we're stopped. We're completely stopped. Like a week ago, we were, or two weeks ago, we were stopped and, you know, there was nothing we could do. Um, the gravel was still coming in, but once the gravel is out, we have to wait for another shipment of gravel. But again, that's going to, we only have a few more loads of gravel that are coming in and then, and then we're stopped again for the gravel portion. Um, we, you know, like I said, the core volunteers, it's usually the board members who are actually doing the installing of the ties. So um, that part, you know, we schedule, we, we all, everybody has lives still. Everyone so has day jobs. There. You're not, <laughs> yeah, you're not, no, all, you're not all on the trail all the time. Yeah, yeah. And there are, you know, other hiking places, you know, hikes that I like to do too. So we're there. Um, we were there actually a lot more, um, maybe four days a week. But now we're probably only there two days a week actually installing ties. Oh, interesting. And we had a big volunteer um, turnout on Saturday, that this past Saturday, and we did a huge, um, we got really far mm -hmm. um, installing ties. So that that was awesome. And, and how is, um, you know, I think COVID has affected a lot of aspects of, you know, 
uh, hiking and kind of the traffic. Has there been a big decrease in traffic when it comes to uh, the trail or? Um, you know, initially we, we thought there was, but when there, there's still a ton of people. Oh, really? But I can imagine there probably would have been a lot more, um, you know, pre COVID because we estimated, we did our own, um, data and we estimated about, you know, a thousand, a thousand people coming, um, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. A day? um, yeah, a thousand people wow. coming throughout, you know, uh, on the weekends. That is intense. Half, yeah, half that maybe during the week, uh-huh. uh, weekdays. Wow. So there's a lot. And now, you know, during COVID, it is less, but then there's still, when we're actually working, it's, you know, people, we you can't shut down the trail. So sure. they're going to, you know, walk around us. And so it does take some navigating. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I would imagine this is not a one-time project because the trail's going to continue to deteriorate with mm-hmm. the east, with weather and, you know, people walking around the bridge or wherever. I mean, that's all going to erode, right, That the, the side of the trail itself. So yeah. this is not like a one-time thing. I mean, you guys are mm-hmm. going to continually need donations and volunteers. Yes. So. Yes. So we are, um, yeah, because this was supposed to be um, a temporary fix. Mm. But we have to look at it as more, this is it. Because we don't know if we're going to get more funding from the city. We don't know if they're going to put it in for our budget. You know, there are a lot of more important things um, to spend money on for the state of Hawaii and the city. So we understand that. So we have to look at it as um, longer term, you know, than than our short term plan initially that we, you know, we thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. So, and we'd like to, you know, hopefully maybe the city will have a uh, designated, um, hire somebody specifically, you know, for the trail maintenance. Um, but otherwise, you know, where as long as I'm here, I'll, you know, and, and the board members, we're still going to volunteer our time and um, continue keeping up with the trail, doing whatever we can. And like I said, there's so many volunteers that they, they love to help. Yeah, the community, the community response must be great for you guys because, um, you know, you guys were definitely on the news as well for a while when you guys were kind of doing the the, your big fundraising and your GoFundMe, Mm -hmm. which which got a a fair amount. I looked at it earlier today. Um, So, yeah, the community response must have been pretty, pretty positive for you guys. Mm -hmm. So do you have any do you have any fun uh, stories about the the trail? Like, did anybody ever get married at the top or like, did you? Famous people. I know Obama, like Barack Obama's done it, but like any, you have uh-huh. any other fun stories about the, about the trail? Um, well, like, well, there's one, like, I fell flat on my face. But, <laughs> oh, that's, a that's a fun story. I thought I broke um, some ribs. Where oh, were yeah. you? Um, I just, I just tripped over a hollow. It was up before we even started working. I tripped over a hollow tie and I landed um, face first, you know, you- going down. And just like I'm so glad I didn't hit my teeth. <laughs> my teeth would have just came out. I swear. I just oh like, my goodness. boom. And I, you know, the wind got knocked out of me. And I was like, I tried to get up and I couldn't breathe. And the first thing is like, did anybody see me? Oh my god, did anybody see me? Nobody was there. Only my girlfriend saw me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, there's celebrities. I mean, I miss them. There's some basketball players that come up when you know when they're in town. Um, who do I see? I, you know, I, it's so hard to tell nowadays too, with people wearing masks or, oh, yeah. you know, you're not even, people don't even recognize me if I'm not in workout clothes. So I, it's so hard for me to recognize somebody else when I see them off the trail, but, or even on the trail, like, I don't know who's, I, I can't even tell who's, who, but I always hear there was, you know, somebody on the trail. Mm-hmm. Um, was it yeah, so Kevin Allen, I, the guy I, from Hawaii magazine. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Did you see him? He was on the side of the trail Hawaii. crying. Guy Kevin. <laughs> this, this guy Kevin crawling up. He's, he's yeah. in really bad shape. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks like he would be fine, but he's not. He's not. He's not okay. <laughs> he's usually not. <laughs> uh, I'm not a land guy. He's kind of. I'm, I'm more of a water water dude. <laughs> <laughs> water guy. Um. Okay. So, <laughs> 
Uh, how much time do we have left, Kevin? Are maybe you to wrap it up. Maybe a couple minutes. Yeah, we can we can wrap oh, it up. Dang, that went by so fast. You know, time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. No, we, oh, we got we got some time. Why? What you got? What you got, cat? Well, so Lena's a big hiker. Um, it's not what she does for a living, by the way. She she's a boss lady, but anyway, but she hikes a lot because she's her own boss, so she makes her own time. I just is curious for people who are listening in. What are your favorite? What are hikes you would recommend for folks who are visiting to Hawaii? So don't give away your secret spots, but like, what are like a couple of hikes you would recommend? Um, okay, well, I'll recommend the hikes that are on the um, yes, Alahele uh, <laughs> trail system. So you can Google that. Um, but I like the hikes that take you anywhere, anywhere you know, up into the Koalaus. Mm. You know, anywhere you can get onto the KST. So Willy Willy Nui is a good one. Um, that one, though, you might have to show a Hawaii ID before you go into, you know, that residential gated area. So they allow hikers. Um, I'm not sure if you have to be a Hawaii resident, though. So Willy Willy Nui is a nice one. Hawaii Loa, Kulio'o. These are, these are just easy, well, to me... And, you know, to other hikers, probably, they're just easy. They're really easy um, trails, fam- very family-type trails. Um, and I just love going into the cold house. Mm-hmm. And if you can explore a little on the KST, then, you know, I'm not going to tell you exactly where or what, <laughs> but the, these are legal-sanctioned state-run hikes. <laughs> I like it. Can I can just say uh, uh, Lena's opinions are all of you know hers. She they, she does not reflect Hawaii <laughs> Magazine. Um, we say you right should now. follow yeah. the law. Yes. Also, she said it's easy, and if you disagree, that's not our fault. <laughs> Speaking of, yeah. I have a hike recommendation. Cat, you said I'm not a land guy, but I went on a hike um, a couple of weeks ago. I did Peacock Flats. Um, oh, on the yeah, North I gave Shore. Gave me a vacation day to do that. I gave me a vacation that. day. I'm running. I've got too much vacation days. Um, but that oh, hike. The Big Road, Kalia Trail. Oh, I'm sorry. Going to flats. Oh, we just took the. Um, we just we just drove in to the. Oh, there's a running out of time message. Um, we just went right through the front gate. I'm not too sure. Uh, I'm not too sure of the layout exactly. There's like that oh. gate that you can, that's right across the street from the Mokalea like beach park that you can just yeah. walk into. Oh, that's Kalia Trail. Oh, is that Kalia? Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. That's yeah. a, that's a, can, yeah, that one's nice. Yeah, it's good it for is. families too, I feel like, because it's just yes. like, it's literally just a road. Like, it's a paved road pretty much the entire way up. Um, but it's nice, you know? What's up, Kat? Yeah. You're giving me that look. Oh. Because Kalia is like a switchback on the side of a mountain. Uh-huh. Like, the top, and then there's you like a doing an airfield, yeah. Right, it's a picnic and area. Up. And then it, I think it's around. Oh, so, yeah. maybe I'm thinking maybe of something else. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of something else. The, mm, uh, Isn't it like a horrible day too? Like it was raining or something? Oh, that was a nice part. I love, because you're. it's oh. a paved road, but you don't have to like, so you don't have to worry about like a muddy trail or anything. And then it's raining. You get misted, you know. That's hiking, Kevin. Dude, that's hiking to me. Did you, did you jog down? No, I didn't. Did you walk I, I walked the whole way. Oh, okay. okay. So this is next time. If you there's two of you, bring and you can stage cars. Park at Dillingham Airfield. Go up Kelia. You can go through Kua Kalo or whatever it's called. You can get all the way to the west side. It's so beautiful. Oh, you come wow. back. It's a loop. You can make a whole loop, and then you come down Peacock Flats on the um, the asphalt road. Oh, I and see. You can drive all the way back to the car. Oh, okay. There we go. That's smart. Next, that's my that's my next year hike. You know, that's my yearly my yearly hike. That road is so long. You know, that like, road is really long. Yeah, you, we got to run. We just need to be done with it. <laughs> Speaking of being done with things, uh, we got to be done with this podcast pretty soon. Oh my god! That's on Kevin. my game with these. Um, Lena, where can people go to support the Coconut Coalition? Where can they find you? Please give us all of your information. Yes, so they can go to coconutcoalition.org, and that's all case. No C's in that. Coconutcoalition.org. They can um, find us there. There's um, all our information, the history about. Coco Crater as well, um, volunteer links, donation links, 
um, they can join our Facebook page, Coconut Coalition, and also follow us on Instagram, Coconut Coalition as well. Yep, and don't forget to sign up for Amazon Smile, the Coconut Coalition and the charity. That's yes. right. There we go. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Help us out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kat, where can they find us? HawaiiMagazine.com, everywhere on everywhere. social media at Hawaii Magazine. Oh, um, what should they do? They should subscribe. I, oh, yeah, I was just going to say that, but you cut me off, like usual. As always. So you should subscribe, rate, and comment. Um, we love comments, so please um, send us comments. You can also email Kevin. Yeah, please do. <laughs> I read all your emails. <laughs> It Every does. single one. Yeah, he does. He's except for mine, apparently. But whatever. It's um, anyway, too many. Yeah, so please rate us. Um, it means a lot to us if you can subscribe and rate. It, it does help us. It does help us um, get to discover other people and let people know about our podcast. Have a little, a little travel, and uh, that's about it for us. Thanks, Lena, for being on it. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so yeah. much, Lena. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was fun. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you all for listening, and we hope you have a great week. Mahalo. Bye. Bye.